Welcome back to the channel, guys. So we're going to take a little stab at a video today. We've never tested this before. No. Uh, many things we have tested in the last couple of years filming <laughs> on the channel. Um, this has been one apparently that I mentioned in the early days. Dude, you said this to me, <laughs> I, I swear, maybe like my second or third week, I hadn't been in a video yet. And you said something to me when we were like brainstorming. Oh. You're like, oh, I'm kind of curious about spike shoes and spikeless yeah. shoes. Traction. The was, value. At the time I was kind of thinking, okay, sure. Whatever you think, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the options in the footwear um, sort of market right now are, are significantly higher than they've ever been before. Yes. Comfort, but performance seem to be getting blended uh, more than ever. So yeah, I remember when I first started playing golf, everyone wore spikes, metal spikes in their shoes. Real spikes. Everyone oh, yeah. uh, wore that. Then the the uh, the soft spikes came in and they were they were a little bit sort of better for the greens and of things course, like that yeah. but they were still pretty i remember using one called the black widow yes and it those, still, those still great. i mean if you ever dragged your foot or didn't quite oh, yeah. lift your foot you would tear a chunk out the green uh, and these shoes are only a couple of weeks old they've got champ i think just their stock one in there right and i've been careful to make sure i pick yeah, my feet yeah. up because i've i've kind of worn spikeless on and off for rounds of golf right uh until my foot slipped one day on a tee box and i went need to wear spikes yeah didn't take much. Well, I think there's benefit to it. I think yeah. there's value to it. And we're gonna run through that today and see if there is. So we're gonna have Matty do hit some shots with spikes on. We're gonna have you hit spikeless golf shoes. Yes. Shoes intended for golf. Absolutely, they are golf shoes, yeah. They are golf shoes, but they, they have no support. They have no traction in the bottom. No. Nope. Then the shoes are getting tossed. <laughs> Right? A complete barefoot golf. Complete. I mean, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum is zero. Yeah. Um, so I want to see what that is. I want to see what happens to your swing. Um, I don't want you to be influenced by any of it. So I've literally turned everything off. Numbers are blanked we've, out. We've covered the, the GC quad. You will not see a single number staring back at you. All I'm going to see is roughly where the ball has gone. That's about yep. it. Yep. I've asked you to swing at a um, perceived exertion of nine out of 10. Not as fast as you can swing, yep. but pretty aggressive so that it should challenge your Correct. balance at least not just you know if, if you're chipping in bare feet yeah probably won't notice yeah yeah exactly okay so want to see all those things um you know i actually want to do this test again outdoors though uh, i do want to do it another time maybe outdoors. a little do on the the morning we'd love grass. to do that we'd love to do that i think that'd be good especially for the spikeless shoe it's a great idea um, would be would be fantastic maybe a couple different uh, slopes and stuff too this is a good baseline though. This will we'll be see great. if there's this anything to it. Yeah. Kind of thing. This is exactly. This yeah. will be see if there's there's merit to it. So we were we would have done probably or most people would have expected maybe to go start with uh, shoes off and work our way up to shoes on. We feel like you're going to have your most aggressive swings with shoes on obviously. Yeah. So to level the playing field, let's get your first swings with those. Yeah, I think it's the warm-up bias gets removed. That yeah, way you don't yeah. go, oh, well, you were warmed up, obviously Correct. you hit these ones better. So That's we're doing why you're it faster. reverse order. Exactly. Good. Okay. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Uh, exertion. You're going to have to keep swings. reminding me to swing hard. Okay. Okay. Shot okay. number one. That's good, yeah, yeah. Spikes, good. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sad. <laughs> Is it broken? Honestly. Yeah, it's good. They're good swings. Okay, so a, a less structured spikeless shoe now, uh, made by G4. So comfortable to walk in. <laughs> I mean, that's what all our boys wear here. Yeah, like it's a great uh, shoe. The comfiest shoe. And does that have the wave insole in it? The, yeah, amazing. A little kind of rippled. Oh, it, rippled. it feels great it's on your feet. Oh, so nice. But is it good to play golf in? Exactly. Where's the trade-off between comfortable and uh, structured? Okay. Let's have, let's have a few swipes. Yeah, 
loop really nice. It's nice. So going, going spikeless, do you notice much of a, a difference in your traction? Are you feeling less support? I definitely feel just like the softness of the shoe. The I think structure. The More structure, than the traction. Right. Yeah. The structure initially sense. is what I feel. Yeah. I do feel, I was saying before we got on camera, so my trail foot, I guess it does rotate a little bit. It definitely does, yeah. I can, I can actually see the fronts of your feet lift slightly. Which is a swing flaw, to be fair. Well, yes and, and no. Like a lot of people will move, will tend to, uh, in the backswing, when you're loading the backswing, you want to rotate into your, you would want to rotate into your trail heel. Yep. Okay. In the so heel. if your if your left foot comes up at the front slightly, that's that's more of a loading oh. sort of phase for you. So right. you're loading into that. So I don't think that that's not a bad thing, but we see that come up ever so slightly. I've had a round with spikeless shoes. It was kind of a dewy sort of morning, yeah. a little bit moist out there. This foot kind of gave a little bit of this but, uh, in a couple of swings, mm -hmm. and then you lose your traction. So I'm definitely familiar with there being a, a difference on the golf course, yeah. but I don't know what that translates to in terms of like your swing direction. Right. Hammered it. Good day for the driver, Matty boy. It is a good day for the driver. Yep. Okay, I think I've kept my speed up through that, I think. Or at least I, uh, I tried as hard for what it's worth. The barefoot bum <laughs> at the cottage. Bum golf, a little bum golf. It's a little fun golf. So, I mean, a drill that co a lot of coaches get players to do to sort of start to gain a little foot work awareness. Is there a historically famous golfer that used to do that? Is that a Sam Snead Sam thing? Sam Snead used to do it. Okay. Yep. I thought yep. that was right. Definitely. Um, Something that really gets you feeling, if you, if you struggle to feel at like your weight transfer, or mm. maybe you're moving front back quite a lot, and you're struggling with heel and toe strikes, right. whip the shoes off. Just It'll awareness give you a really is heightened. Good sense. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're, you know, you're then in full contact with the ground, and you can, uh, you can start to swing a bit slower and, and build it up to your one, better footwork. One thing I was just thinking as we do this, barefoot would sort of be similar to like really floppy shoes. Like if anyone ever golfs in like really floppy like Nike style yeah. running shoes that are great for running. Like I, I so I, I wear the, the Nike fly knit. Yeah, I have a pair of those. Right? So of those. there's no structure to that and you know, nice soft. Uh, so but like literally you can just, you can well, that's bend the thing. thing in half. So you don't, you don't have any structure for Nothing. your toe to flip over no. on and stuff? No. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, at least it affected your performance. Yeah, it really removed my ability to hit the ball. I'll tell you what, it does not feel good on the back foot. Yeah, there's, there's a weird feeling to it. Kind of felt like I wanted to keep my feet planted mm -hmm. for longer. That's exactly what it felt yep. like. Because I was afraid to, I guess, just move. So I, I kind of always felt when we would do this that the no shoe swings would evolve. I right. wouldn't expect all five to be the same. They I get think, worse. You know, they, or, or yeah, <laughs> maybe like, well, I won't say exactly what I think will happen, but right. I, have, I have a thought, I've always had a thought of what would happen. Now that felt strange. I didn't do it consciously, but I felt like I kind of left my feet where they were at a dress. <laughs> Yeah, same again. Like, I don't think it's a terrible swing, but I yeah. kind of feel like... You're, you're kind of back foot <laughs> throwing the hands at it. Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, is that just basically a lack of... It probably is a lack of weight transfer, maybe. It, so, it, there's rates of speed that are happening all over the place. Uh -huh. When you reduce a rate of speed, you will gain a rate of speed somewhere else. Mm. Right? So, what you're losing in your rotation and footwork and drive from the body is being made up for in your, your sort of hand speed. Interesting. It would explain why it's hooking also, no? Yeah. So I, I don't know if I've seen you hit 10 better drives than you did with spikes and, and spikeless. 
This has gotten me a little bit out of the comfort zone. To the sure. point where you now are really struggling with the driver. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm towing most of them okay. or miss hitting them in some sense. And it's exactly what you say. Everything feels very out of sequence because mm -hmm. my lower body feels like it must be frozen to yeah. not fall over. This would be a great test for us to do if, we, if and when we do a follow-up to do it on Swing Catalyst. Oh, yeah, good point. Wouldn't it be yeah, good? Yeah, what do you do with your To see your where your traces go, front, back, laterally as well. Well, C's getting one, so we can, that we would can be crash awesome, the then. party, can we? Yeah. Nice. Sounded really hard. Hammered that one. Pretty good. That's better. All right, Matty boy. Um, interesting little test. Yeah, I mean, it felt a lot different to me. That's for sure. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but the results probably shook out a little bit different than what we thought. Yes. And then in other ways, probably reflected what should happen. So one thing I would probably take away from this is the fact that there's a pretty big dispersion and consistency improvement with yeah. the spikes on in a perfectly dry artificial turf yeah. setting. Very stable ground. There's no um, slope whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact that it even came up in this scenario mm -hmm. means that if there's any moisture on the ground, if you're on a 2%, 5%, whatever yeah. slope, good, like good luck in that situation, mm -hmm. I would think. Well. I think in terms of the spikes, spikeless, no shoes, the less traction you had, the more the face rotated. That's my takeaway. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the more the face rotated, which it did, but probably more consequential or, or certainly created the compound effect was the fact that the strike moved toe side. Mm -hmm. I think that's just offsetting your lack of traction. I think moving sort of back a little bit to not really want to get, you know, must feel fairly, that speed, you must feel fairly uncomfortable when you get to the front of your foot and, and get into your toe area. Yeah. That must feel pretty weird. A couple of the swings, well, the first one where I basically like let go Yeah, you it. let it go, you just kind of walked through it. I, I kind of felt like I was going to fall over, to be yeah. honest with you. Now, yeah. I understand the result was, was pretty good, yeah. but you would think over time, you know, five shots, the strike pattern was worse after mm -hmm. five shots. What about, you know, 50 shots, yeah. 500 shots? Well, we... Let's see how many shots. I mean, 19 shots for a 15 shot test. Right. So we, we have used, we have used pretty much everything. Yeah. There's just a couple swings with, well, one with each basically, plus the warm up that I said were just crap swings. That was basically. literally it. Yeah. So for that to be the case and the path to be identical, angle attack identical, Dynamic lie was very similar. Interestingly, a little bit um, <laughs> more toe up, but that's more to do with the face rotation. Right. As we know, when the face rotates, the handle is a little less up. Um, so that's that's something we will see. Dynamic loft not different, and and really exact same speed as when you wore spikes. Yeah, and one thing I will say is I was purposely trying not to be, you know, gingerly with the spikeless or yeah. barefoot. I don't know that I could maintain that over a period of time. Like well, you were saying to me, make sure you don't try to slow yeah. down. Like try to. I wanted swimming. you to make 15 incrementally faster swings, yes. not not dial it back exactly. just because you're later in the test. I wanted you to feel like you're you're increasing it by one decimal point every single swing, yeah. just to offset the tendency to lose speed. For sure. Result-wise, uh, launch angle, spin rates, nothing crazy. So really, the uh, when it comes down to it, the face angle, the strike point. We did see a little increase in, uh, in the closure rate. And that was, I thought your idea about the sequencing to be pretty interesting when you said, well, if you're gonna freeze up yeah. the footwork because you're afraid of losing your balance, naturally the arms and hands are gonna start moving faster. Absolutely. And so it showed up in the numbers, which is yeah. it's pretty cool actually. 295, 261, and then 2267. Huh. Uh, and, and an increased closure rate degrees per second. And not surprising that the spikeless was decent. Like it was probably gonna be not too, too bad. No, absolutely um, fine. But I do think it will get exposed in, in the outdoor test. I think based on this, I would say we should definitely follow up outside. Yeah. There's enough kind of indicating that there'll be a bunch outside to no do question. it again. Yeah. yeah. I think take us off of a sure footing like, like this. This is the best case scenario. And yeah, you this, this is as good as it gets. Yeah, you're not going to do yeah, any better. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but more to, more to test. And the other caveat I would add to this is you have pretty good footwork. 
you're not all over the map at your speed, your, your feet aren't, you know, it's not like you're losing balance. And th there, there are people that are significantly slower, you know, and, and they're kind of slipping. And, and you know, they're, you can see once they've left the tee box, the imprint of, mm. of, of their kind of footwork and how much stress there is on, on the shoes. That's a good point. So if you, if you notice more foot movement when you look at your swing or again, yeah. like what you said, do you see kind of grass ripped up after your yeah. swing? Maybe this gets just completely exaggerated for you. Without a doubt. Mm. When I used to play a Lynx turf, the firmer the turf, the more I would really struggle with my back foot moving that way. Of course, it's just slipping. Just, just slipping because it's, it's so firm. Right. So I had to put metal spikes at the front of my right foot. And it was spike, um, soft spikes in the left and at the back of the right foot, but metal spikes at the front just so that front foot wouldn't pull back. Yeah. Um, just to offset the amount of traction and, and kind of pull that was in there. It's pretty interesting. So something to, to think about for those people who struggle a little bit with their footwork. I love that. Well, it's officially on the list for outdoors. Yeah. We'll do it. I think it's a good golf course test. Maybe we can play, you know, front nine shoes. I'm not going to play barefoot, but three maybe holes. spikeless. Yeah, three, yeah, hole, three, three holes. hole rounds. Yeah, exactly. Could maybe do that. Maybe three holes, maybe three, three, and three or something like that. We're going to get kicked off a course if I take my shoes right off, though. I like know. They're going to be like, what are these barefoot dummies <laughs> doing on my golf course? But the other two we can do. For sure. Pretty good. Okay, guys, a um, little fun one for us. Maybe some information in there for some of you guys, and we will test this a little bit more. We'll see you again soon.